Hello everyone, it's Steve with Aptera Owners Club. You guys remember like about eight, nine months ago, I put out this video called This Might Be Aptera's Best Chance to Get Into Production, talking about the ATVM loan because um, Aptera was finalizing their ATVM loan application at that time. And then a few weeks ago, a few months ago, I talked about how Jigger Shaw, who is in charge of the DOE ATVM loan program, he basically called out Aptera by name talking about how innovative Aptera was basically. And so he's well aware of Aptera. He's the director of the loan um, programs office, which administers the ATVM loan program. And, you know, it seems like he's a fan of Aptera. Um, so I thought that, um, and I still do think to some extent that the ATVM loan is probably Aptera's best chance to get into production. However, um, there may be some, issues with that and I wanted to go over that in this video and um, if, if you like only good Aptera news maybe you don't want to watch this video but we're, we're going to talk about some of the challenges of the ATVM loan for Aptera and the reason that I bring this up is because someone in Discord talked about this thread on Reddit talking about this company called Mullen Motors. Now Mullen Motors is um, this company right here, I, I had never heard of them before. They are kind of an offshoot of Coda Automotive. And I do remember Coda Automotive. Coda Automotive was around at the at the time of the first uh, iteration of Aptera. Coda Automotive also tried to get ATVM loan back then, just like Aptera did and did not survive. And they kind of merged into um, Mullen Motors. Now, um, Let's look at this. This is a Reddit post from about two years ago. And they're basically talking about how the ATVM loan has this um, financial viability criteria. And the financial viability criteria is that the, the loan recipient has to be financially viable without the receipt of additional federal funding. That means that they have to prove or show to a high level of confidence that even if they don't get the loan, that they would be financially viable. And I think that's a very, very hard metric to meet, especially for startups that have no revenue stream. And Mullen Motors and Aptera Motors, although you know Mullen is basically a very um, uh, generic looking uh, car company, you know their their car. I don't know what differentiates their vehicle from you know the run-of-the-mill um, EV out there. Whereas Aptera is very innovative. So we're not talking about innovation. Um, I'm talking about its, vi its financial viability and the fact that they were both startups and they both don't have any revenue stream and they both aren't selling any vehicles. Um, and so in that case, they have costs, they don't have revenue. How can they show financial viability without the receipt of any uh, federal funding? Uh, that seems to be pretty hard. And that comes from this um, document here that is called uh, Guidance. So let's go to the very top here. This is Guidance for Applicants to the Advanced Technology Vehicles Manufacturing Program. This is dated May 10th, 2019. Now, just as a little background, the ATVM loan um, as you guys remember, is the loan program that put, um, got put on the map because Tesla survived to a large extent only because of this loan. They were loaned about $465 million to Tesla. Um, and you guys may remember a company called Solyndra. Solyndra was a, um, was a solar manufacturing company in California that also was given about $500 million through the ATVM loan. They went bankrupt. Obama caught a lot of flack the Obama administration caught a lot of flack about it saying that you know the government was the we were giving away loans to bad companies and wasting a bunch of money and then at that time it wasn't clear that Tesla was going to make it uh, Mitt Romney and a bunch of other Republicans were saying that you know that Tesla was a loser and that we were all this whole ATVM loan program was just wasting a ton of taxpayer money and it was it was really really bad well it turns out that um, uh, Solyndra was kind of the odd man out and most of the ATVM loans were paid back. And uh, I think the ATVM loan is net positive about $8 billion in loans, $8 million in loans, sorry, $8 million in interest payments. So they're making money for the taxpayer essentially. But that whole Solyndra scare um, uh, basically kind of put the ice on the program because it was politically a kind of a bad look. And there was no loans given out since 2010 until 2022. So they've started giving out loans again. And so that, that looked good. Okay, but 
on this guidance, if you look down here, we're gonna scroll down to the financial viability uh, section, because I think that's the most important part. Okay, here we go. A demonstration of financial viability. Um, in order to demonstrate that the applicant is financially viable without additional federal funding, the applicant at a minimum must provide the financial information in these forms. Okay, so no problem there. In determining whether there's a reasonable prospect for repayment of the ATV and loan. So they just, they really don't want to repeat the whole Solyndra thing. And so they want to make sure that they're going to get their money, that you're a viable company. Which seems a little odd. I mean, I understand from a, um, like if you're a bank, you want to get your money paid back. Um, but if you want to make, uh, if you want to fund innovation in the American economy, yeah, I think you kind of have to accept higher risks, but the ATV and loan program seems like it's set up not to accept, um, higher risks. They want a high degree of probability that you're going to pay it back, which I understand that, um, you know, they don't want to waste taxpayer money, but if they're saying that you have to be viable, even without their loan, it's like, well, if you if you need to if you're viable without the loan, why do you even need the loan in the first place? It seems like it's set up to help establish com uh, companies that already have a revenue stream just um, accelerate the things they were already going to do. It is really not set up to help startup companies uh, that have no track record and have no current revenue stream uh, to launch new new technologies and new vehicles. Okay, so in determining whether there's a reasonable prospect for repayment. The, the ATVM loan program will give significant consideration to applicants that provide for any form of credit enhancement from credit worthy affiliates or partners of the applicant. The applicant's NPV calculation should be incorporated into the forward looking financial statements. The NPV should be calculated using the discounted cash flow method on a free cash flow to the firm basis. The discount rate applied to this calculation should be a market rate based rate, which reflects the weighted average cost of capital of the proposed borrow include its cost of debt, cost of equity, and consistent with rate of return expected by similar investors in similar projects. This was all like complete Greek to me. Um, so I kind of looked it up and NPV stands for net present value. And the way that the, so this is what it means. Net pre present value is determined whether or not investment project or business will be profitable down the line. Essentially, the NPV of investment is the sum of all future cash flows over the investment's lifetime discounted to the present value. Okay, this also made no sense to me. Like that was complete Greek. Um, and here's the formula. Now this kind of makes sense to me. Um, so the, they're doing cash flow, cash flow uh, divided by one plus R and then squared and to the n minus the initial investment okay this is looks complicated but it's really not that hard um and then it, this is the formula like there's cash flow that's how much money that they're generating in aptero's case from selling vehicles and then n is the number of periods of time so like months or years and then r is the discount rate the reason that they have to do this discount rate is because of something called the time value of money which means um money that you get now is worth more than money that you get later because there is um, a uh, what is this what, what is the word I'm looking for there is opportunity cost basically money now you can invest it you can you can do stuff and get more money with it but money later is not as valuable so there's this time value of money so you have to discount the cash flows in the future from any initial investment now so it makes sense if you look at these like um, uh, examples. So let's say that uh, the government's going to give uh, Aptera like a hundred million dollars or something, and then the cash flow of Aptera in year one, year two, year three is you know a certain amount. But if you do this and you put in the formula into this formula, all the future cash flows you have to discount them. You have to make them worth less than present money that's given to them. Um, and the way is that this there's the discount rate is probably the like the rate of uh, interest or the rate of inflation. It's some it's something that takes those two into account. Now, if you guys are financial experts, please, in the comments below, explain to me how I'm not getting this right. But essentially, um, the Cliff Notes version of it is, is that they need to say that their cash flows in the future, even after discounting for the time value of money discounting the future money uh, compared to present money, that they're still going to have a positive value. That's what they want. And I think, you know, that makes sense uh, from that thing. Now, 
the, the future cash flow is only going to come through sales of the vehicle. And so how are they figuring out sales of the vehicle? And that's what the most important thing here is. And it says right here, determination of adequate future sales depends on significantly upon the stage of development of an applicant and the products proposed to be financed. Where a company has a history of sales of the same or similar project, uh, then the determination of adequate future sales may be straightforward, especially when there's significant evidence of unfulfilled demand. So this is saying if the company has sold similar vehicles, then they can say, oh, you know, we have all these order pre-orders and stuff. And so we generally, we definitely expect to um, sell these things and generate this cash flow. But Aptera and Mullen Motors both ha have no history of sales of similar vehicles. So that, that's, that's a problem for them. So, however, where a startup company has not generated revenue seeks to commence operations or this. So this is, this is the situation that Aptera is in. It is a startup company that has not generated uh, revenue seeks and it seeks to commence operations in selling these things. or an established company proposes to enter a new product or geographic market the evaluation of adequate future sales cannot be made primarily on the basis of past sales performance well of course like because aptera has no past sales performance and startups don't in these instances applicants must develop proposals that either establish to a high degree of confidence that adequate future sales will occur so how like that the question is how can you develop proposals that establish to a high level of confidence so you think well aptera has like 40 some thousand uh uh pre-orders i mean that seems like there's a high confidence of future sales so but let's read on or that so that the consequences of doe of sales underperformance have been mitigated in many cases applicant proposals will involve some combination of both in all but the most extraordinary circumstances, market studies and non-binding customer reservations to purchase vehicles or components will not be sufficient to establish adequate future sales. This, I think, is the crux of the matter because that's what we have right now. Aptera has market studies. They've done market studies and they think, you know, there's like green uh, uh, people that are interested in sustainable things, people that are interested in fast cars, people that are interested in solar cars, some people that are interested in commute you know cheap commuter cars people that are interested in recreational cars you know they have a market they've done market studies and that looks good they have uh, lots of customer reservations but they are non-binding customer reservations we can all get our we can all cancel our orders and we can get our deposits back these are non-binding customer reservations so the two things that aptera has currently are not sufficient to establish adequate future sales um, whether a particular applicant proposal is adequate for DOE's purposes is a highly fact-specific inquiry that will depend on many considerations, including the relevant product, geographic markets, cost structure of the applicant, any pre-existing revenue streams and liabilities that the applicant may have, and the ex level of competition in the marketplace. In other words, there is no one-size-fits-all solution. Um, so this is just like word salad, basically saying that um, they are going to look at many different factors to determine, yes, but the the factors that they are not going to find sufficient are the two things that Aptera has. So I don't know what other things Aptera has that's going to make it um, establish with them a high degree of confidence that adequate future sales will occur. And in fact, that uh, that they will uh, you know make it to production. So based on past experience, certain measures observed by DOE serve as illustrations of how high a level of confidence and adequate sales uh, can be achieved in the absence of demonstrated history. So this is kind of important. So what are they gonna go into? For example, long-term contracts for purchase of the product output from a credit-worthy off-takers, contract off-take can significantly reduce market risk. So I think this, my interpretation of this is they're saying like, for example, uh, like let's take Rivian, for example, Aptera guaranteed that they would buy their product in terms of delivery vans and and Amazon is a cash rich established company and they are a credit worthy off taker so um that if Aptera got like a large company that has a lot of money to say yes we're going to buy um a ton of uh Aptera vehicles that is um, going to look favorably on them currently we know of one fleet deal for Aptera it's to a uh, a place called sustainability sooner you guys may have seen um, some ads from them in like uh, 2-Bit Da Vinci and Kim Java and a couple other places maybe. 
Um, they've also asked me to uh, kind of promote them, but I, I couldn't vet them adequately. I'm still waiting. I, I, I think that it seems reasonable what they're doing, but I, I just need to talk to them and they've been too busy to talk to me, I think. Um, but anyways, I don't think that they're, they're also this kind of really small uh, outfit and I don't think that um, they would be considered a uh, purchase from a credit worthy off taker. Okay, similarly, if the product market for a product is an established commodity market, um, established, characterized by standardized performance, evidence that the applicant will be selling to the market profitably may serve to mitigate market risk. So that it does this this situation does not apply to Aptera. They they're not it's not a commodity market. The, they're they have a very unique vehicle that uh, is not uh, similar to other vehicles. So it's not a commodity market. Uh, while the foregoing measures have demonstrated useful, so these are the two measures, and Aptera does not meet either one of these two measures. While the foregoing measures have demonstrated useful in the past, DOE does not prescribe specific arrangements to establish the likelihood of adequate future sales. Such as arrangements are best achieved by applicants with reference to the specific circumstances of individual projects. Note that while adequate future sales are a critical element of financial viability, many other factors come into play establishing overall financial viability, including but not limited to demonstrated managerial capability and experience, the ability to execute the project plan, the availability of other capital resources, the existence of relevant intellectual property rights, the ability to obtain all necessary governmental approvals, and the ability to generate cash flow and profits from sales over time. So these are, they're saying you need, this is not the only thing you need, you need a bunch of other stuff. And uh, they need to demonstrate managerial capability and experience. And I think Aptera can, can prop, you know, uh, arguably do that. Uh, the ability to execute the project plan. I think Aptera has done well in executing the project plan up until now. So I think that looks good. Availability of other capital resources. This this is a major issue. Maybe the crowdfunding is is something that they can point to and say that they have ability of other capital issues. Existence of relevant uh, intellectual property rights. They are applying for a lot of patents lately, and we'll probably go over a few of those in the, some future videos. So they have that ability to obtain all necessary government approvals. That seems pretty uh, viable since they are uh, they basically they're targeting the auto cycle market, which has far fewer requirements for government approvals, and the ability to generate cash flow, cash flow and profit from sales over time. I think that is possible as long as they can make it to market. The biggest problem is this financial viability problem for them. The other thing, um, so here's the thing that I wondered. We know that there was a big um, change in the program, trying to make things easier and open it up um, in 2020. So I thought maybe the guidance had changed. This is a four-year-old document. Um, so I went to here and I looked for, where can I find more information about the ATVM loan program? This is their updated website. And they point to, um, the guidance to applicants of the ATVM, which is dated May 2019. There is its interim final rule as well. Um, but I looked through this and it didn't really change the um, requirements very much. So you still need to show viability. And um, the other last thing that I found, um, let me see if I can find it. Uh, well, they don't, is that they do have to pay a 0.1% loan origination fee if they get approval. I don't think that's a big problem because like, let's say they ask for mm, say $200 million, then 0.1% is only $200,000, which they can easily afford. So I don't think that that is a big deal. Um, now we know like what happened to uh, Mullen Motors. Um, if you look at them uh, back in uh, 2020, and even as, re as recently as 2021, they were worth um, about three thousand dollars a share. They're currently worth half a dollar a share. They've lost ninety nine point nine six percent over the past five years, and that's that's from here. If you go to here, it's probably like ninety nine point nine nine percent. They are not doing well. They're still around though, and it looks like the New York Power Authority um, it agreed to buy some of their vehicles. So I guess they are maybe producing some vehicles. I know they did not ever get the ATVM loan. They were, this is a company that was really counting on the ATVM loan as well. Um, so I hope that this is not a foreshadowing of what, uh, what Aptera is going to go through. So I, I hope Aptera does get the loan, but uh, I'm a little less, um, 
sure. I, I thought there was a better than 50-50 chance that they were going to get this loan until I, I looked through this um, post and uh, read their guidance. But this whole financial viability without the loan part is a pretty high metric. And I think that's why almost all the ATVM loan recipients have been established uh, companies after Tesla and Fisker. Like Fisker also um, did not pay back loans. Fisker, Solyndra, Tesla. I think those are the three that got ATVM loans. Um, the others were all established companies. And so established companies have a very easy time showing financial viability. Startup companies have a very difficult time showing financial viability. And so the ATVM loans are very difficult as written in their current guidance for startup companies to get. So I think it's a little bit harder for Aptera. Um, tell me what you guys think in the comments below. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day.